Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And today, it's truly a, truly a special day because uh, I picked up a, a true grail card. A card that I've been looking for for many, many years and a card that I was looking to get at the National if I could find one. And when I did my uh, video that said the, um, my top 10 dream cards, uh, this was number nine, just ahead of the dandy mantle. And, um, you know, th the reason I haven't been able to find one of these cards is because, you know, there's, there's, very, diff there, there's very few of them around. And um, what it is, is, you know, I'm a pre-war guy, way pre-war guy. And um, I, had, I had this one of the same player, King Kelly. And um, I was looking for the King Kelly Old Judge card. And uh, I, you know, I haven't been able to find the right one until I finally found the right one at an auction. And I finally got it. Uh, the only problem is I've spent my money, so I won't be getting anything at the National because I just picked up my National card right here. The King Kelly, 1887, and 162 Old Judge. This is one of the rare versions of that card. It's the card with the bare head and Chicago on shirt, which means this was one of the first cards that was made probably in 1886 when the Old Judges started. Because uh, in 1887, he was traded to Boston and that's why he's wearing the Boston shirt in the 1888 card. So what happens is, is in this 1887, which is really, this set it was produced from 1886 to 1890. And they have different versions of each player. And King Kelly has 10 different cards. Only two are in the Chicago, um, in the Chicago uniform. One without a cap, and one with a cap. And the only other portrait card is him with a Boston uniform. And that is one that came a little bit after this, after he was traded. So you see the $10,000 Kelly, he was traded to Boston for $10,000. Why? Because he was the top player at the time. He was Babe Ruth before Babe Ruth was around. And this card is so rare that there are only four graded by PSA total. And the top graded one is a three. And I've seen the other ones and they're in terrible condition. And this one, the picture is great. And the thing with these cards is that they fade very easily. And the pictures on these cards are, are actually photographs they're called acumen photos that are pasted on the card stock. And this one, of course, it's a one, mainly because of the back damage. It was in a, uh, in, a, in a scrapbook, but that's why it survived from 1887. 1886, essentially, is when the card was made. And like I said, there's only four that exist. And the more desirable cards of, of Kelly or Cap Anson or any of these old Judd cards are the portrait versions. And they're very, very, very rare, very tough to come by. And I was going to get one of the batting uh, poses. There's a few, a bunch of batting poses. Every one of these cards, the pop is under 30. And some of the rare ones like this one, the pop is only four. So this is King Kelly, and I'll tell you a little bit about King Kelly. He is my favorite player from the 1800s, and I'm going to tell you about him. You know, he started playing when he was 15 years old. He was already drafted, not, not really drafted, but he was pay, being paid to play at 15 years old. And he played for the Brooklyn Atlantics in 1873 
He made his eight major league debut in 1877 with Cincinnati. And, um, you know, overall, he had a lifetime batting average of 307, 46 war. Now, the thing back in those days is that you really didn't play a lot of games. You know, they had to do a lot of traveling. So the seasons were short. You know, they started playing, uh, you know, there were 60 game seasons and really didn't get to 154 games until 1900s. So, um, you know, his war was low, like many of the war in, in that era, they were low because of that. Those issues, they're just, uh, even though he played for over 15 years, I think 17 years, um, you know, some, game, some years he only, they only played uh, 70, 80 games. Some of the things that he did, because he was the most famous player in those days, him and Cap Anson, and um, he was a catcher, and he was the first catcher to use a glove and a chest protector. Before then, nobody had used that before. Um, he was the stolen base champion. And not only was he the stolen base champ, I mean, there were, you know, he would play, let's say, 70 games. There was one year he stole 84 bases. Uh, there was one game that he stole six bases in one game. He was a speedster and he was a big guy. He was uh, six feet tall. In those days, that was very tall back then. And he was a very handsome guy. So, you know, he was, you know, he was, uh, he was very well liked. Here's a picture of him. Here's a picture of Cap Anson back in those days. So he, um, he was quick and they couldn't stop him. He invented what today is called the hook slide. And once, you know, that came about, you know, everybody was, wanted him to, you know, went to, to see him, steal bases, to watch him play. He was very popular. And the first pop song ever recorded in the United States was recorded for Kelly, and it was called Slide Kelly Slide. And it was based on his sliding technique and, and how famous he became with doing his famous hook slide. But he, was, uh, he would do a lot of tricks out there. He would, he would sometimes cut bases and, and kind of cheat and go all the way from first to third if the umpire didn't catch him because there was only one umpire at the time. And he changed the rules of the game. You know, there was one game that he, um, the, the, other, the, substitute, the other catcher was catching. And in those days, all you had to do was tell the, just yell out to the, to the uh, umpire, you know, uh, Kelly coming in for the catcher. And they, you would come in. But what Kelly did, one game was he literally was in the dugout. It was a pop-up that was coming to the dugout. And he, and he shouted, Kelly coming in for catcher. He got up, caught the ball. They called it an out. But they had to change the rule after that so that you couldn't call yourself in, you know, during a play. Uh, some of the other things that King Kelly uh, uh, invented was the hit and run. He was the first one to do the hit and run. And that was something new at the days because, you know, he was a base dealer. So he wanted the people to, to just swing, hit it, because he was running, you know. So he created that hit and run. Um, other stuff that was created for King Kelly is he was, like I said, traded to Chicago, from Chicago. But when he played at Chicago, he played with Cap Anson. And when he played with Cap Anson in Chicago, Cap Anson was not very happy with him because he was a drinker and he was a party guy. And he really wasn't the type of player that Cap Anson was. Cap Anson was uh, worked out, you know, he took care of himself and all that stuff. So when he came to play in Chicago, Cap Anson said, I gotta get this guy in shape. So he created spring training. And spring training was created for, to get King Kelly in shape for the season. So those are some of the things that you know, this guy uh, created, and they made it because of him. So it's kind of it's kind of neat to know some of those things. I mean, some of his records, for example, he was the uh, leading hitter in 1886, the year this card came out, and he batted 388. Um, he stole um, one year 84 bases. 
Another year, 68, 56, 53, 51. Those were all five years in a row. Um, and he was just a, a run scorer. One year, he scored 155 runs in 118 games. Another year, 124 runs in 107 games. So he was an incredible, incredible player. So Cap Anson brought him in and really put him in shape and uh, got King Kelly back to where he needed to be. And, um, you know, uh, after, after a while, you know, he wasn't an easy player to deal with. And, uh, and they ended up trading him eventually uh, to, um, to, to, to Cincinnati, actually. He ended up going back, going to Cincinnati. Um, he played for a lot of teams because, you know, Chicago mainly was his main team. Started with Cincinnati, went to Chicago, then went to Boston, and then uh, played again in Boston. But there wasn't any league. There were different leagues in there, so it was kind of weird. He played for the American Association and then, you know, the National League back in 1891 for Boston again. So he played for a lot of different things. One of the things that we, when he came back to, to uh, Cincinnati, they actually created a big party for him. Uh, the first, they, cre they had, not only did they build a team around him, him but they, they created a, uh, a stadium for him because he was a big draw. He also did a lot of, uh, um, you know, he was on broad not Broadway, but he did plays and things like that. Uh, he actually did the uh, Casey at the Bat in, in, you know, vaudeville. That's what they called it back those days, in vaudeville. And... Um, Anyway, the other thing I was going to tell you was that uh, in, during the uh, time when he went back to Cincinnati, they built a stadium for him, and uh, the stadium wasn't built in time. So they had to go and play the first games away. They were all away games. And as they played the away games, they prepared the stadium for the big day that Kelly came back to play at the home field. And when they came back, they made a big, the first day, the first, it was actually the first opening day. So King Kelly, they made opening day because of him. And what they did was the, the mayor of Cincinnati had a big um, parade where they got all the players from horse and carriage all the way from the hotel, all the way into the stadium. They had the marching band playing um, they had the marching band playing and everything. I'm also going to show you another Cap Anson card that I picked up at last year's National. So you can see that one too. I'll, I'll give you a good look at all these in a minute. So what they did was they had the, uh, the, a band playing and the band was, marching band was playing Slide Kelly Slide as they went horse and carriage all the way to in the big presentation all the fans were following all the way into the stadium and uh, when they got to the stadium they had a big ceremony and it was opening day for the day the first real opening day was created at that day unfortunately they, they ended up losing that game and but um you know king kelly was the king in those days they called him the ten thousand dollar kelly because he was the highest player back in the day. And I've been looking for this card for a long time. And you can see here, you can't really read it in this thing, but it says that these are photographs made by, it tells you right above the Goodwin thing, it tells you that by the CH uh, Gallery in New York that made these pictures. And what they did was they took the picture and they put it in a, on a cardboard stock. It's got some scratches on the thing but i wanted you to get a good look at king kelly and this rare old judge card there's only four of these graded by psa so you can take a good look at that in the chicago shirt which is the rare version of the card i was looking for the batting pose in the national that's what i was going to try to get if I didn't find that, I was going to get a Walter Johnson card. But when I saw this rare card, when you see something rare that you want in your collection, 
you just gotta go get it. So I did. And I'm so happy that I got my King Kelly card. So my collection now for King Kelly is pretty much complete. I wanted to get my, the Goodwin Champion and I wanted to get an old judge, two plain day cards from King Kelly, which is what I did last year for Cap Anson. For Cap Anson, I wanted to get, I had, I had the, uh, the Goodwin Champion card and I wanted to get another one, but I couldn't get the uh, old judge because just couldn't get one. There's only two portrait cards of Cap Anson in the old judge set, and they're both extremely tough to find. And here's, so what I did was I ended up getting the Mayo Cut Plug Cap Anson to go along with my Goodwin Champion Cap Anson. So now I have two uh, 19th century cards of Cap Anson and two 19th century cards of King Kelly. I'm super, super happy. Like uh, Dylan says, I'm stoked. Double chaga. There's a double chaga right there. So I've got my uh, Cap Anson. Now the Cap Anson, if you see this Mayo Cup plug, it's a little bit larger because these were inserted into actual tins of tobacco, not cigarette packs, tobacco tins with tobacco, loose tobacco in it. So that's why these are very, very difficult because of the black, they do chip super easily and they're stuffed into a tobacco tin. So most of them will have uh, some damage, but you know, the picture is a good picture of Cap Anson and that's really what I was looking at. It does have a little tobacco stain there. Kurt's car care will probably take care of that. No, I'm just kidding guys. So there's the Cap Anson. Mayo Cup plug. There's the Cap Anson in the uh, Goodwin Champions. Here's the uh, King Kelly in the Goodwin Champions. And then my last and final pickup. Incredible King Kelly old judge with the Chicago uniform. Look at that uniform. Look at that picture. It's just awesome. 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 I'm super, super happy. I just can't uh, tell you how happy I am. The only bad news is I will not be spending money in the, at the National, but I got what I wanted. So the good thing is I'm going to have more fun at the National with people and I won't have to be looking for too many cards out there. Maybe pick up a couple of little low-end stuff if I can sell something over there. So anyway, guys, I wanted to show you some of my 19th century um, Hall of Fame uh, players. Uh, King Kelly, my latest pickup, and Cap Anson, the uh, first uh, 3,000 uh, hit player and the uh, greatest player in the 19th century, uh, Cap Anson, and the uh, most... Uh, loved player and the highest paid player in the 19th century, Mr. King Kelly. Thanks everyone for watching. This is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. Please like and subscribe. Have an awesome, awesome day and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.